Hello, welcome to my no flip tutorial. In this video, I'll be giving a brief overview of the no flip method as originally proposed by Matthew Sheeran. I will also be talking about how to solve for multiple angles and how to do simultaneous turns. You can learn this at any skill level. You can even average 15 seconds. If you can do simple arithmetic and memorize five numbers, you can solve no flip. For the no flip method, inspection time is precious. This will be when you will be calculating what moves you need to do on the front to solve the cross on the back. For simplicity, I will be referring to the top clock as U, the left edge as L, the center as C, the right edge as R, the bottom edge as D. The first number you calculate is U minus R plus D minus L. So 7 minus 10, that's equal to negative 3, plus 4 minus 11, which is equal to negative 7. So negative 3 plus negative 7 equals negative 10. Negative 10 equals 2. Why is this? Because on a clock, when you turn it, negative 10. It's the same result as if you turned it plus two. The next number you will calculate is M2. M2 is L minus D. So 11 minus four, which is equal to seven. Seven is equal to negative five because if you do plus 7. It's the same result as if you did negative 5. It may seem complex now, but after a few dozen solves, you'll get used to it. The next number is M3, which is calculated as C minus U. So 8 minus 7, which is equal to 1. Then you calculate M4, C minus L. So 8 minus 11 is equal to negative 3. The final number is M5, which is R minus M4. So that's 10 minus negative 3, which is equal to 13. 13 is equal to 1 because doing a 13 is the same result as doing a 1. So, it may seem a little hard to memorize that even though it is just five numbers. So I'd recommend using monosyllabic numbers for every one of your integers. I use the Sinochorean system for negative numbers. So negative one is equal to ear, negative two is e, negative three is som, negative four is sa, negative five is o. I also use nil for zero. So altogether, this memo is two, o, 1, sum, 1. The final number, M5, I usually just visually memo, though. So the final number was 1. So visually, I can know that that just means I move this one by 1. You can execute M5 whenever two diagonal pins are down and execute it on a wheel that is down. For this, 
you can execute it here. One. And then I can solve the center edge to this edge as usual. Then you can proceed normally for a while. So solve those. Then I can solve these to match this. And now we're back to doing actual no flip stuff. So M1 is two, so two. And then I solve these to complete the cross. Next, I do M2, which is negative five. And then I can solve these to match this corner. Then M3, which was one, and then solve these to match this corner. Next, I have M4, which is negative three. And I can solve these to match this corner again. And now you're basically finished with solving the cross on the back. So you can just finish off your solve as usual. And it's solved. Now, how do you solve from different rotations? Well, it's pretty simple. It's basically the same except for your calculation for M5. So, M1 is two minus 10, which is negative eight plus one minus seven, which is negative six. So negative eight plus negative six equals negative 14, which equals negative two. M2 is L minus D, just like before, seven minus one, which equals six. M3 is C minus U, which is 11 minus two, which is equal to nine, which is equal to negative three. M4 is 11 minus seven, which is four. M5 changes though. So instead of doing 10 minus M4, you do seven minus M4. This is because you look at its position from 12 and it is at seven o'clock. So seven minus four equals three. So that memo all together is E six Psalm four three. So three, it would go there. E six Psalm four and you're solved. If you're an astute observer, you may have noticed that doing the turns on the back does not require you to change the pins. This means that you can turn both the front and the back at the same time. You can use this to your advantage in solves by executing the numbers you memoed on the back at the same time as doing the moves on the front. How do you do this though? How do you become good at it? Well, the answer is one you'll probably hate. It's practice. After a few hundred no flip solves, you'll find yourself gradually beginning to do it just without even thinking about it. If you don't, however, I'd recommend practicing doing moves simultaneously. Like that. 
try doing slow solves where you use simultaneous moves. Over time, you'll become good at it and become comfortable with it. And be cool like me and Tommy using no flip with simultaneous turns. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I'll make more videos in the future on more advanced tricks you can use in your solves for no flip. This is in no way optimal or the best way to do no flip. This is just what I think is best for beginners to start with. Yeah, see y'all.